Hello and welcome to the button lay. For this video, I thought we'd take a look at organizing our seeds in terms of sewing times. I like to start using a pencil and a paper. I'm just that kind of girl. I like to feel as I write. And we go through and I label with my seed names the weeks before frost because now I know that my last frost day is April 29th and I have 158 days of growing season. So I like to get everything organized. I also thought it would be fun to include a little bit more of the home life. You're going to hear my kids. Um, you're going to hear them talk to me and other things. I hope you enjoy this and hopefully this is a reminder that if you haven't developed an organizing system for your seeds for sewing that you start now and you do anything that works for you. What does that say? Sew inside or direct sew, DS. So that's basically what we're going to do. So we take a packet like this. So these chives are perennial herb. They actually don't tell me when they need to be sewn. And if they need to be sewn, Outside or inside, so I'll just write them down and then we'll have to figure that out. So, yep, we'll have to figure what that says out. That's right. So, right here, we're just gonna write chives. That will be a little bit of a research. And then we can do this. We're going to our herbs here. Oh, my mommy, so, my morning glory is like, oh. Yes, they are. So this is our entire line of, um... Oh, it has this. That's mine. That's right. No, uh... Entire line of herbs that we're just going to go through. And we're going to label. And then I have to look up dill. Oops. <laughs> dill and, um... Also, my catnip here. To see when I need to, um... Plant it. Yeah. So we'll just go ahead and write down a few things here. Yeah, Hi, just so everyone can see, I've got little L here. He's my helper. So if the table shakes a little bit or you see a little hand or the seat packet kind of just disappear all of a sudden from my hand, it's because I have a four-year-old in my lap. As I'm formatting this, I kind of do something different every year. As I have acquired more seeds, um, just from previous experience, I realized I should probably include the um, days until it's mature. I didn't do that last time, so I was left wondering and staring and looking. And I did write down the dates of when I had planted them, thankfully. But I had no way of knowing is my plant stunted because of the different spring weather that we had, or did I transplant it out too late for this season? So this time around I decided I would include the dates of maturity. And my seeds are a collection of seeds, like I'll pick up seeds from Target, that's what those buzzy seeds were, pick up seeds from the Dollar Tree, anywhere that I find unique seeds, I will try to pick them up. And then when I say research, all I do is I go on Google, I type in this, the name of the seed that I'm gonna put in, and I ask when or the maturation dates for that in my area in the state of Nebraska because on the back of a lot of these older ones that I got it'll tell me like the maturation dates but it won't and it'll tell me the harvest dates but it won't actually tell me when I need to plant these before or after and some of the other ones don't even tell me the maturation dates. So, so long as it's a common herb that just anybody can pick up or a common seed, most of these questions I have found anyway can be answered via Google. <laughs> it's the beauty of modern technology. So basically, all I do here is go through my herbs and some of them, like this one, they have the maturation dates set as dates to harvest. And it will tell me, for instance, sow in full sun after danger of frost. So I know that I have to actually sow that seed, you know, after my last frost date. And I like to wait a week or two afterwards. And so what I will do actually later on, once I have all of this compiled, is I take my calendar off the wall and I will start 
and I have it written down because I get so excited and I put hearts and stars on the last frost date. So I will count back and I make a note of everything. So here I put DS direct so after frost date. So when I do that, I'll just put, I'll just count back and then I'll write an approximate date. And this go around, I'm also going to do something different because some of my seeds stay organic and some don't. So I'm going to plant both. I'm going to make sure they're planted in the same conditions and I'm just going to compare how they grow and what the result is. I want to know if spending just a little bit extra for organic seeds actually gets me something better or if they're both the same. And I know there's a big debate among the seed world against about organic, GMO, non-GMO, and XYZ. But when you're living on a budget, it really is about what you can afford. Can you afford this? Will it grow? Will it provide for your needs at that point? If it's yes to all of that, then do it. Because in the end, you are feeding your family. It is something that is fresh, homegrown, something that you could possibly can dry, store, and put away, and that helps you in your overall budget because that's what we're about here in the budget life is doing everything small and trying to at least stay one step ahead of not having any money. Let's be honest, every penny is accounted for. But anyway, continuing on. So I'll grab my calendar and I will count forwards or backwards. I give myself those dates. Um, if it says I have like two to four weeks, I'll write down the dates in between those two. If it's something that I know that I've grown before that will do really well in the weather, I will put a first sow and a second sow. For instance, this rosemary. Right now mine's kind of, eh, it's hanging on there. I just praying it through. I'm like, you can do it. Please hang on until spring when I can throw you out on my porch again, secure you to the rail, and you're going to be okay. So some of these, I'm thinking of planting some of these for some family to just give as presents in the spring, in the summer, something easy, fresh herbs that don't need a lot of tending or attention can pretty much survive if they're neglected. And rosemary is one of them. And if you bring it inside or if you want to leave it outside to die, that's fine as well. A lot of people are intimidated with starting it. For instance, there are special germination instructions here for rosemary and that's okay. I'll do the fun part of germinating it and you guys can do the hard part keeping it <laughs> going. But some of these seed packets are very helpful. This is one of my favorite kinds because it gives you a picture of what the seedlings should look like. Because I am so guilty. I did it this year. I planted, or I should, not this year. Wow. We're in 2022, not 2021. I had planted direct sowed outside. And there was no picture of what the seedling was. So when I was weeding, I weeded every seedling but one out. So I had a beautiful crop of well-tended weeds. And one of the actual <laughs> seed that I had planted. <laughs> so... I, it was one of these packets here where it just gives the generic little drawing of a seedling. <laughs> so, um, so when I have those packets with those special things, once I'm done using them, I'm still going to, I'm going to cut that out and label it. So as I have to replace the seeds or I dry my own seeds and store them, I'll be able to say, Hey, this is the seedling and all my hard work won't be for anything. So I'm not just tending a gorgeous crop of <laughs> weeds <laughs> for everything. Anyway, the rest of this is just going to be how I continue to set it up and hope you enjoy that. See you in a few once I'm done with the writing. <laughs>
sure you can see I am done. It took me a little over an hour and a half. I like to use pen for my dates so I can differentiate between everything. And this was an hour and a half's work. Hi guys, so I'm back. So it has taken me a little bit over an hour to transfer everything on that pink sheet to my um, little journal here. My uh, blue journal. So I'll go ahead and I'll show you what I did. So... What I did was I wrote myself a little tab because, you know, depending on the time of the month and if the kids are sick or not, I probably forget what I wrote down. Um, so basically, I just took every single one, wrote down the month and about the dates that I can sew them. So I have March is beginning of a busy month, and then I have April, which bled over here. And then, of course, our busiest is May because... That's after the frost date and everything's ready to go. Now, I could have used an Excel sheet to do this, honestly, and I've done something similar for school when I had to calculate different things, but the laptop that I have does not have Excel on it or a way to put it on, and I don't have any reason to do that. So, yes, even though it did take an hour when our boys are in their resting time, this is how I've planned it out. And I kept the pink paper. I just um, put it in the back here because I like the maturity dates so I can get an idea, especially if I have like something where the pests eat it all. I can go back and see, do I have enough time? And if the cool weather crops, if it's just a loss. Now, does this mean that I won't buy seeds? Uh, probably not. I'll, I'll buy seeds. Here, let me just turn you around. I also plan to, because this journal is pretty much um, my garden journal that I'm going to be doing, so I plan to record the weather, wet or rainy, how the seeds do when I plant them. The biggest challenge is going to be sowing them inside, because as I said, we're um, the button life, which everything is on a budget, so I have to figure out which lights are going to be the cheapest lights to buy, where I can hang them, because they're just going to have to hang from the ceiling. I'll probably have to grow them in my room. <laughs> my poor husband, bless his heart, he lets me do it. Um, and figure out how to grow them successfully. I also have to calculate and look at the square footage and see if I'm getting the same garden plot from the community this year, or if I am lucky and I might get a larger garden plot. Or something different. Another thing I haven't mentioned is those garden plots. Um, I have to bring the water myself. There's no hose or anything so I have to devise a better system than last year's to bring the water because that's a lot of plant. Though if I do plant it in the spring during the wet, wet months that'll be amazing. It's just the hot months that I'm not looking forward to. But anyway hope you enjoyed that and if you like this here um, I'll be doing other videos of normal life so have a good day.